Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. Kittens Crying in the Park is the highly praised children's book by Laura Matsuda. The story of Mara and Aldo playing at the park one lovely day. They're surprised to find two kittens, alone, shivering, hungry, and crying. Realizing the kittens need some help, they bring the little ones home and together with dad and mom, seek to comfort them. They're not sure how to do this. Fortunately, a solution happens when an unusual heroine steps in to care for the weak kittens. Laura is an honor graduate from a Toronto business college who grew up in Malton, Ontario, later British Columbia's remote caribou region, surrounded by animals, crops, barnyards, cabins, farm machinery, poverty, hard work, commitment, and lots and lots of family. Later, Laura studied at the Justice Institute of BC, received honor qualification in mediation and negotiation. She then received contracts with the Attorney General to provide child protection mediation, family mediation, and as co-therapist, delivering group sessions for men who had assaulted their intimate partners. And Laura Matsuda, author of Kittens Crying in the Park, joins us on This Week in America. Laura, a pleasure to have you with us on the program. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, and the pleasure's mine also. It is such a remarkable story that you've done, so charming, and it's a children's story that adults are going to learn from as well and enjoy. Let's talk about, uh, well, first of all, start with your background. You do so well in, in writing the story. It, it's told in such a heartwarming way. How long have you been writing? In high school, at the end of high school, well, I was editor of the paper, the school paper, and got the annual produced as well. And I started to have a feel that, like, my juices flowed when I was writing. And so then I went to college, and then I got busy with building a family. And But all the time I was telling stories. I would tell stories to my kids. I would tell stories to their friends about from the ranch and some of the, the happy things that happened and some of the hard things that happened. Yes. And I found a joy in that myself, but I found that... The kids and adults in groups I spoke to were leaned forward listening. It's a story that packs the wall up for me. You've got to wrap whatever it is you're conveying as far as um, truths and things to live by. You've got to wrap it in a story, I believe. So I had, I've had i learned through the years. And now I have 20 grandchildren. The older ones bring their friends over to hear a story from the ranch. And, you know, this has become a, a great satisfying thing my hope is to leave a rich legacy for my family but others as well well you certainly are doing that with this book kittens crying in the park you've got sort of a a, a test group there a marketing group of uh, 20 that are going to that are there <laughs> that uh, will give you honest feedback and there is something about you know talking to a young group and holding their attention and you're able to do that so well obviously verbally as well as is doing it uh, in your writing is this the first book, Kittens Crying in the Park? Is this your first one? Actually, it is. I've done a lot of writing because I've prepared course material and I've instructed many groups, and I always use stories as part of that. Didn't even pull that together really till lately and realized, wow, that's been a strength all along. But then I got the urge to write. I just, I mean, literally a couple of times I had to get out of bed, turn the computer back on, and get that thing on paper, not only in this, not just this book, but in other things, and get it down because these things would come to me, and I, I'm thankful for that. It's not about me. It's, I guess, it's a gifting, and I'm thankful for it. Well, that's interesting because I'm so often I think, but once your mind gets going and you're really into a topic, in this case, telling the story, kittens crying in the park. I would think it'd be difficult to shut it off. I hear about writer's block and I'm thinking maybe the opposite is true a lot of the time. You just uh, you just can't stop it where it where it's coming. So you'll get up in the middle of the night if you have to 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 write down the thought. <laughs> yeah, if I think of a phrase or a line or a little tidbit that'll be excellent, I I just get up and do it right now because you know things disappear from your mind by morning sometimes. <laughs> or you'll lay there for three hours trying to remember what it is, and you end up getting no sleep anyway. You might as well get up and go to the computer and uh, and write it down. Laura Matsuda is our guest on the program. Matsuda is M A T S U D A. The book is Kittens Crying in the Park. The book available at Amazon, the usual places, uh, published by 
Pro Isle Publishing. Their website is proislepublishing.com. All of this on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Out of all of these stories that you've had in your life, the time you spend, as you mentioned, on the ranch, what inspired you to write this book about this particular story and, and make it your first book? I do love animals. We've always had cats and dogs, and on the ranch we had calves in a old bathtub in the back room that they needed help, and baby piggies that needed bottle feeding. So, pigs and cows, and even my my son, my brother had a pet rooster. So, animals have been part of our life and an enjoyable part. And so, in our marriage, we've always had dogs and cats, and I wanted to. Um, I really wanted to convey the message, but it needed to be a more simple animal in my thinking than a dog. A dog is very, very intelligent and relatable, and kitties are a little less uh, relatable often, but they can um, demonstrate things I can use for the story. So that, I guess that's why I chose kitties. I'm not, I'm not really sure. It's not a brilliant anything. It's just happened that way, but I needed to... Um, have something that children could read and feel happy and comfortable with, and parents could read and feel happy and comfortable with, and we we and they could all learn. I learned a lot writing this book about writing in itself, but my heart's desire is that those principles of problem solving, problems are big in any relationship, and often, you know, people have the problem and they think each other's the problem and blame and blame but the problem's separate and it's all of us each other of us we have to work with the problem together and i wanted to present that in a simple format so that um so that there's a piece of learning can find lodging when people are yes. needing it thinking back you know You've done such an excellent job of taking all of these themes. It starts with the animal, but you've got the parents cooperating, uh, looking to the parents for help and going through that. Talk about developing the themes because this just wasn't, you know, we, we found the, uh, uh, you know, the cat, the, the kittens come home and, and, and go through it. There's a lot more there, but it's all told. And that's the brilliance of what you've done in this very simple story of a, a couple of a brother and sister that find these cats and bring them home. Talk about some of the messages that you wanted to get across because there are many. Well, the kids, first of all, found these little kittens who were needy and hungry and crying and they they decided when they couldn't really comfort them to pick them up tuck them into jackets and take them home because mom and dad would help and they got home to mom and dad and they called their parents and the dad in the book he says oh kittens where did you find them and i could just hear that oh my gosh kittens you know <laughs> so anyway but they did all collaborate. They had a couple of ideas. They they were not successful in finding a way to help. And then suddenly this surprise heroine appeared and they could see this was an answer to all of their concerns about this. And I just, I love the story actually. I, I guess uh, it's not just because I wrote it, but it conveys truths and character development and things that I want to convey to people, but the, the kitty story is just a good story anyway. Well, it really is, and it captures the attention of the the reader, the young person, and then as they're reading it, they understand the interaction with the adult, the interaction with the animal as well. How is writing this book, what have you learned in the process, and how has it, it sounds like it, it's helped you as well. It's been good for the, uh, as good for the author as it is for the for the reader. It has been. It, first of all, it's honed a lot of writing skills for me. And I've reached out to friends to listen to me read it to them. I discovered one important thing. When I see it, when I say it, and I hear it, 
I can pick up things I want to change very easily. And so I had people help me uh, edit it and listen to me reading to them. And I've, I've read it to children. And I, the more I read it, I love, I love the story. So that's goofy, isn't it? But No, it, uh, it, it makes perfect sense. And the it, book is Kittens Crying in the Park. If you're just joining us and, and wonder what we're talking about here, our guest is Laura Matsuda. This is her book, her first one, M-A-T-S-U-D-A. Book available at uh, Amazon, the usual places, ProIslePublishing.com is the publisher. All of these links at our website, ThisWeekInAmerica.us. And it's a book that, what's so nice about this, the children can read it and learn from it. They can read it to an adult and you can discuss it. The adult can read it to a young child and discuss it. There, there really is a market is just about for everybody, isn't it? As I say, we learn, we remember to, to maybe uh, what we've forgotten over the years in, in terms of animals and our relationship and working together as a family to solve problems. There's a lot here for everybody. Yeah, there is. And I read it to, well, even two, three, four-year-olds, some younger grandchildren, and they were glued. It was on just on a, a laptop computer at that time, and they were both on a shoulder um, glued to it and they wanted it again and again and so that was interesting and then the older kids seven eight nine they were reading it and loving it you know rereading it and talking about the pictures and so and adults that have read it have agreed with what you're saying in the sense of boy there's something in here for me too you know so i i'm thrilled that's that's my purpose and it happened and there is a sequel coming within a month. I was going to add that, and it's a yes is the good news for the uh, the fans of Kittens Crying in the Park, and the good news, even better news, is that it's not going to take long. So about a month, we'll, uh, we'll have the sequel that we can talk about. Yes, and it's called Kittens Happy Days. Ah, uh, looking forward to that. Don't want to give yeah. too much away, but you'll find all of that if you... Uh, uh, when it's out, you can go to the uh, uh, proislepublishing.com and go to amazon.com and uh, information there on um, on Laura's page. It's uh, it's fascinating what goes into doing this and the success that you've had in reaching people. As an author, what's the ultimate goal? What do you hope to accomplish as an author and what did you hope to accomplish with Kittens Crying in the Park? Mm -hmm. I have always enjoyed teaching and I, I'm an interactive kind of a teacher using object lessons and things like that so I I'm not going to be around I'm not going to be around one day I'm flying away you know <laughs> so um, I want to leave a, a legacy I want to leave a heritage and uh, particularly to my family but everybody anybody and so um, I'm sorry I kind of forget what the question you asked. Well, it's just the ultimate goal in, in writing a book. Goal. Yeah, what do you hope to accomplish? Yeah, now that I'm older, I'm at the stage where heritage and legacy is poignant to me. It's important to me. And so I want to leave these concepts, con life concepts, that may help people to think through things and work through things. Because, you know, everybody needs to... Uh, be encouraged to work out life's issues that isn't easy and if i could just encourage and help people give people a hand up i'd love to do that that has to be so rewarding when you're reading the the reviews and you're getting feedback that uh, those messages that you wanted to convey are resonating with people and they 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 are grasping what you're telling in this this charming story kittens crying in the park what influence did those years, I mentioned the years on the, on, on the ranch and the closeness with family, with the animals, that really shaped sort of who you are, didn't it? In fact, in terms of a writer, that shaped who you are. It did. I, you know, when I was two and three years old, I'd follow my grandpa around and my dad also, they had milk cows, which of course this is in the 40s and so they're hand milking on their small farm. Oh, yes. My dad would lean his forehead into the flank area of the cow and just lean in there and he'd sing the whole time he was milking and that milk would just come into that bucket like it had the <laughs> high pressure thing behind it and he'd even squirt it out the back and feed the barn cats and the barn cats would stand on their hind legs and drink this warm fresh milk fresh from the machine you know but anyway that's my early memories and it was delightful and something kids now 
may not ever have known or would ever never known. And I like to tell those stories and they like to hear them. And that's good. Well, and yes, and you do uh, do that in the book, Kittens Crying in the Park, Laura Matsuda, our guest on the program, M-A-T-S-U-D-A. If you're Googling, you'll find the book at Amazon, the usual places published by Pro Isle Publishing, their website, proislepublishing.com. You, you talk a lot about it, or the, the, the message as you read is this human animal interconnection. Talk, mm-hmm. you t- just talked about that with your dad and the love and the, the connectivity he had in, in dealing with the animals. It really is important. And sometimes in our busy lives, we sort of take it for granted, don't we? Yes, it's the simple things, you know, your kids don't need to go to Disneyland, they're not going to die without Disneyland. I'm not saying I would love to go to Disneyland, and I would have been loved to take my kids, but just taking a fishing pole and going, finding some water, or going on a walk, going to the park, climbing a bluff near your place, or whatever, um, but especially in the context of mutually enjoying, like on the ranch there was it was hard things sometimes, but you're there together. You you have sad things to do sometimes. There's calves don't all live, you know, and we had a fire one time that killed hundreds of chickens and uh, things like that, you know, and so you're cleaning up after these things, but you're together. There's some bond, rich, rich bond when you share the joys and share the difficulties and you you grow in it. You grow in it. Absolutely. And it grows the relationship and it just grew my person. Seeing my dad, my mom, our family, uh, and other ranchers that ranching and farming is not easy. And especially in the 40s, 50s, 60s, it was homesteading where we were. Oh, yes. So, yeah, no power, no water, unless it ran to the water with, in buckets, or ran to the house in buckets. And, but fun, good, good stuff. Yeah. Well, all those memories shape the stories that uh, that Laura well that has written so far. Kittens crying in the park. The sequel will be coming out soon. Uh, other projects are you working on? Any discussion of writing for another audience? Oh yes, there is. I've got. I have had two books in file folders for a long time that I've shared the material from at groups when I've spoken at retreats, etc. And I long to get them into books. Now, I, I'm retired, and we've moved away from the ranching farming area, and um, it's quieter here, and I'm really into my writing. Yeah, I've got an adult book coming, which um, it the story it concerns, it, it's true. It's around when the difficult time when we lost a twin grandson, when our Kate, my son and his wife lost a one of their twin grandsons at 18 months of age. Wow. And, uh, and they had two boys slightly older than that. And the whole family was affected by that. And the family, the elders and the youngers were affected differently. And just to kind of watch that all. And, um, and you know, in, in the end, I would say that, um, you know, God's had my life in his hand since before I knew about it, and he certainly did in this instance when we all were suffering and didn't didn't know what to do, you know, so we we made it through, but there's lots of stories about that story, so that's what I'm excited to get out, because there's poems, too, and they've really helped people already, so I hope they're real, I hope they're a blessing, I hope people's day is easier and hearts mended, and um, they're encouraged to go on in life, because that's what I hope. Well, it's what you're delivering and you're, you're doing it in such a way because yes, as you're, you're, you're talking about those topics, they're topics that unfortunately so many people go through and you're there to, to help them by sharing your experience. They're not going through it alone. You've been through it. So many others have been through situations like that. A couple minutes left in the program. I think of Kittens crying in the park. It's very visual. Obviously, it's a children's book, and you know, thinking about this would make a, a cute little, uh, you know, short form video. That type of thing. The other stories you're talking about, the way you write is very descriptive. Is is what I'm trying to say. Any work on a screenplay? Would you like to turn some of these into a video format of some kind? I would love to. I don't have a clue, but it would be very exciting. I love challenges, so. 
be very exciting to do that. And if somebody, uh, or I don't know how to do it. So I'm very open to that. Well, it would uh, it'd be the next step in these projects. And if anybody's listening or, or watching, have any ideas, that's fine. Contact us. And I will, uh, I will pass that along. Laura yeah. Matsuda, that's M-A-T-S-U-D-A. The book, uh, the first one is Kittens Crying in the Park. Second book should be out very shortly. Any, any beyond that? I mean, you do such a wonderful job with this uh, family solving problems and interaction with animals. I could see a whole series of books coming out of that concept. <laughs> Well, it could be, yeah. By the way, I have uh, my own site, lauramatsuda.com, and people will be able to purchase off my site directly within a couple of weeks. Oh, fantastic. That is great. So I'm going to spell it again. Uh, Matsuda is L-A-T-S-U-D-A, Laura, L-A-U-R-A. And uh, just put a dot com at the end of that, and you have uh, Laura's website. So we'll make sure we get that on uh, all our promotional material as well. So we have that there. So a number of places where you can uh, get kittens crying in the park, and more importantly, stay in touch with Laura when she has new projects coming out. Laura, it's been a, a pleasure having you on the program. Such a wonderful job with the uh, the first book. Looking forward to uh, to more books from you, and hopefully the opportunity to uh, to talk about those. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day. You as well, Laura Matsuda, and again, website, lauramatsuda.com, her website, book available at uh, Amazon, the usual places, giving you a lot of information. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can get uh, everything you need there and hook up with Laura's book. You're listening to This Week in America, and we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.